Welcome back to the Dad Hustle Show. This is Will Crown, and today I have the privilege of sitting next to my beautiful bride. Hello. As well as an amazing couple here, Darren and Retta Gilliard. I actually randomly met about a year, year and a half ago, maybe? Almost two years, yeah, I would say, oh. yeah, almost two years. Oh my gosh, and how did I meet you? This randomly stranger coming up. Stranger danger. A stranger danger, which yeah. is the reason why I said this guy is a weirdo. Because <laughs> he randomly came, we were coming out of Starbucks, oh, mm -hmm. I was coming out of Starbucks, and it's just like, hello, uh, introduce I like this car. I talk about this BMW. I love the car. It's like it less weird. It's like the cars. <laughs> Which is the reason why I avoided your phone call. And then for finally, we got together like a year later. A year later. Right? Yeah. At yeah. dinner. Just hung out. Hung out. Found out that you and Carter were not weirdos. <laughs> that you were actually <laughs> just re regular. They were regular people. Regular people. And had a great time at dinner. And uh, <laughs> turns out they were great friends. Well, we have to say we did go to dinner yeah. waiting for the sales pitch. So we were a little <laughs> shocked. Yeah, we did. We did. Oh, we did. We did. We did. Here it comes. We did. Here it comes. We, went, we just came over. We're like, you know, he's like, you know, like, guys. Like, let's She's just been badgering me for a year. <laughs> right. 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 At least I can like, just have dinner. Let's he said he wants to have dinner. Right. We were hungry, so we were like, okay, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's listen. <laughs> and the pitch never came. It never came. I was okay. like, okay. interesting. I was like, they're going to do it at the next dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got together again. So here on screen, I'm actually gonna pitch. I want you guys to join me. Oh. <laughs> cool, and that's a good lesson for life, guys. Be open to talk to people because you never know who you're gonna run into and you might end up meeting some great lifelong friends. Tell me a little bit about how you guys met. I married my stalker. I said I was yeah. gonna write a book yeah, how pretty, to say pretty pretty you marry your stalker. stalker. Okay, I like that. I like that. I don't like the word stalker, perseverance. If you're looking through her window, that's yeah, stalker. That's stalker. <laughs> You know, every now and then looking her up, that's not stalker, that's just yeah, yeah, perseverance. But don't show up at her job or weird places. You show up at my job. Don't show up at her job. <laughs> you show up at your job. Yes. Unannounced. For real? Yes. Unannounced. Don't show up at her job unannounced. He got some secondary information. I, I got some secondary information. Are you up. serious? I know yes. Where it so don't show up at a job. Don't use our example as something to do. You will end up in jail. And I caution, I caution individuals on that. Is don't look at our story as like a roadmap because yeah. it's not. Every you know? couple's got their own story. Yeah, it's a good rule of thumb right there. So yeah. don't try to emulate one couple's the way they did it. We met in high school. Uh, first day, tenth first day, grade, tenth first grade. Or ninth I, grade. I asked for her phone number. Okay. She said no. And what? yeah, she said no. And Tell him what you're doing though. He was in a race with his best friend to see who could get the most phone know. numbers by the race. end of the day. Or a competition. It it, okay. What do you call it? What's the difference? We were just it was just an experiment. It was not I like to I, I like to call it research. So I was, <laughs> it was a friend and I were doing we were doing a research project to see how many phone numbers we could collect in the first day of school. Okay. I was obviously behind, which contributed <laughs> to my desperation. And it's not that she was the first person that said no that day, it was the way she said it. She said it with such disdain. I was offended. You were just he was collecting two. numbers, yeah. right. Yeah. He I just agree. said, can I have your number? There was no, hi, how are you, what's okay. your name? Obviously, it's the end of the day. <laughs> I am behind. Several like numbers. all the buses are lined up to take the off. Buses are wait, lined wait, up. so how did she say no? You said she said no, Dang. like no, like no, like look me up and down, no, like no. Like, how dare you ask me? And from that point on, I said, well, well, she's in trouble now. Not yeah. only are you going to have to give me your number, but now you're going to have to be with me apparently throughout high school. So you went after her heart after that. You were just like, she's yeah, going to be mine. Every every day I saw her, I just it was just one simple statement. How about now? Just how about now? I see her in the hallway. How about now? And she said really? no. She said no. Persistent. No, no, persistent. Dang. How about now? And eventually she said okay, which at that point I didn't know what to say. Because right. I expected her to say no. It's like, do you want to know my name? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this yeah. point yeah. you can ask my name. Yeah. So all you stalkers out there, don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. Keep asking. Be persistent. What well, well, happened to the point where you about. finally said, you know what? It wasn't that he wore me down or anything like that. You were I, doing you. Caught me on a good day, I think. Wow. So timing's everything. Timing, yeah. You guys were then together all throughout high school. 
until second semester, 12th grade. Life goes on, and <laughs> as any of you guys know, high school relationships rarely work out, okay? So then, after high school, you guys weren't together, right? No, we, no. Tried, we did get back together yeah. after that. We got, okay. we got back together that summer, you know, just trying to figure out our next steps. I think yeah. it was just a bit much. Mm -hmm. Ooh, let's um, call it struggles of life. Yeah, it was struggles of life. Struggles I mean, there of was, life. <laughs> we had to make adult decisions. Her decision was wanted. not to be with me. Oh, was that your call? Well, I mean, there was taking us on a different path with marriage and things like that. And yeah. Yeah. I knew I wasn't ready for marriage, and it was a little Edit. rushed. <laughs> <laughs> I think it went back to communication. When we talk about it now, what he was thinking, what I was thinking, we never had the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I just assumed I knew what he wanted, and he just wanted this one thing. He wanted marriage and move forward. And his parents had input. My parents had input. But the two of us, had we talked and had a, had really strong communication about what we wanted, yeah. I think we would have stayed together. Kids, communication. <laughs> that, that's a great point because I know for us in our relationship, there's been times where had we not really communicated, we definitely would have went our separate paths. Yeah. Where that like conversation that we had was crucial in the moment. Yeah, and there were times where we should have had a conversation and it delayed the decision making process. Right. You know, the yeah. decision that would have been a good decision, it delayed it by two years, three years. Definitely learn from our mistakes and we're yeah. still learning because sometimes we don't always communicate clarity. But I, I think that's what kept us apart so long. Okay, so hold on a sec. So then you, you lived a life. We lived our life. Married, he both was, of you. He got married, I got married. Okay. We were both recently. Kids, kids. We had family, kids. Kids, yep. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Sure. So. Once we were, you know, married this time around, I said, well, why didn't you say that? Yeah. I was like, that would have completely changed my mind. Would have cleared everything up. We would have been married 10 that. years ago. Had yeah. you said that sentence right there, we would have been married 10 wow. years ago. I think as men, sometimes we don't think that we need to put out details. We assume that the woman is going to say, yeah, oh, well, that sounds great. <laughs> right. But we no, they just going to go with it. Yeah. It is going to sure. go with it. I'll and, live with you, babe. Whatever. You know, half, well, true, half the time, we, we don't put out the details because we don't have them. We know where we want to end up. Oh, that's good. But we don't have the exact plan to get there. We know we're going to get there, but we don't really need the details. It's not it's all true. mapped out. It's not all mapped out. Exactly. Yeah. Let's put some details in it, and then maybe she'll say yes. Women, we need details. And the trust of yeah. the relationship. So now he can just tell me, hey, babe, we're going here. This is what we're going to do. And I won't sure. ask for details. I'll just say, okay, you know, because yeah. I trust That's him. Good. And I know that anything that he does is in the best interest of our family. But so early on, that we trust didn't is right. It wasn't there yet. Yeah. I hadn't seen him perform there was in zero that trust. capacity before. There was no trust at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was antitrust, actually. Right. It was called doubt. Yeah. <laughs> doubt. It was doubt and antitrust. Well, there are certain things that I do need details to now. Yeah. For the most part, you know, we're, we, we yeah. just, he plans, I plan, and we're, we're behind each other. Yeah. Early on, we were saying where we couldn't trust each other. It was very hard, you know, and now most things we can, but we still yeah. need, de like, details help. Still. Yeah, details yeah. help, depending on what it is. Especially well, on her end, like, to me, I can still just roll. You can, can roll with it. I, I can too. I, yeah. can, I can roll with an idea. And we'll figure it out. And we'll figure it out along the way because as men, it's almost easier not to have the details or, or count on those details going through because something always comes up. Yeah. And changes it. It's never going to be like the exact plan. Which planned. is okay. And that's why communication is more important. I think men think that they always have to fix it. You don't always have to fix it. Sometimes it takes both of us. Let's sit down. Let's talk about it. Yeah. You know, maybe I have a solution too, you know? You know? <laughs> so, no. Well, really? Right? I think <laughs> men's ego comes in a lot, at least in my situation. Because I feel like if I put the plan out there 100%, I give you all the details of what I think it's going to be. If it doesn't work out that way, like... Almost like it's a notch off of my ego. Like, ah, I was wrong. I didn't quite call it the way it happened. Yeah. So maybe that's yeah. why I hold back a little bit. Or you try to fix it before she finds out right. that your plan A went sideways. <laughs> or, you, or you tell her that it went wrong with a solution. So this is right. what happened. Yeah, but, but here's what we're exactly. going to do. I got this and that lined up. And yeah. I still do that. Right. Plan goes sideways. Say something immediately because it gets worse. Actually gets worse if you try to hide it. It's the respect. Because with the communication, 
there has to be a level of respect. We could just uh, turn off the camera. Right, that would be very depressing. depressing. Couples have personalities. Some are structured, some are technical, some are more action, kind of wing it type people. Others are more relationship. So where do you fit in? Right, where, where would you fit in in that four selection? She is 100% emotion. I think she said Reddit. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I am more, it's more about relationships to me. One of the things that we've always had a conversation about that's really interesting about emotions versus facts. Mm. And so what I, he's there's a, a very, there's a difference. There's a part, there's a there's a good part coming up. Good part. Come on, everybody take yeah. out your notepad. Hey, let's touch it. All right. Let's touch it on this part, because here it comes. That, right. That's like we can literally do a game show, and I like the emotions, and he's like over there fast, you know, build a team around it. That was a huge barrier in our relationship, because yeah. he operated off of facts, I operated off of emotions. And okay. I was way to the left, and he was way to the right with facts. But you have to add some facts to your emotions. You can't be 100% all emotions. And, but you can't be 100% facts. And he's like, no, the fact is, the fact is, that's his favorite word. And I the said, fact well, is, the fact is, that's a good phrase, huh? Right, the fact you is, like and I said, and it's not that the facts are wrong, and I'm not trying to prove them wrong, but if there was no emotion applied to us long term, then we wouldn't be together. She is right, emotions are important. I was extremely factual where emotions, considering other people's feelings, didn't play a, a, a role in the major decision. I felt that, oh, that was a feeling. I felt <laughs> that if you allow emotions to come into it, then that will cloud your decision. Because at the end of the day, uh, one plus one normally all the time equals two. But <laughs> no, unless I cry no, no, on it and it takes it down to zero, it's all erased. On a, on, a, on a cloudy day, <laughs> oh you know, you're throwing change. emotions, right? You know, you're throwing emotions, and sometimes yeah. one plus one is like two point three because that there's an emotional uh, skew aspect yeah. skew to it. So, yeah. so based um, on that, you're a technical person. I'm very technical, very, right. which lends to your career. Tell me a little bit about your career, and then we'll hear about yours as well, right? I'm in healthcare administration. I don't know what it is, but I love the business part. I love doing deals. When you say doing deals, what are you referring to? Like, I think you had a project that we spoke about when we first started hanging out. Um, about oh, we were building, I think at the time, well, we were building a new facility. Okay. Yeah, so just from top to bottom, picking out the location and negotiating the price and all, all kinds of, you know, the, the whole thing, the build out contractors. Wow, but it's a lot of responsibility. Your shoulders, like yeah, that. yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, I don't, you don't think about it every day, sure, but you know, the decisions that you make affect a lot of lives. Sometimes you make a decision that may end up affecting people in a way where they can't see their doctor that they want to see because at the end of the day, in healthcare, there is a business aspect of it. There is, you know, it's a relationship, it's a real, yeah, right. So being married to her actually helped me in my job. I was so... Numbers guy? Uh, numbers guy. Unattached. I knew that affected people. Sure. But I think it got to the point where I was doing it so long, I didn't really think about it that much. And then now I do. You're very relational. <laughs> I mean, I can tell you you're technical, of course, but you're also, you're good with people. Yeah. You're Probably one of the funniest people. guys I know. Yeah. Like, literally. Hilarious. We, we can sit out. Uh, the first time we went out to dinner with this couple, we just like laughed and they told stories. Uh -huh. so. Yeah, he said you're like Kid Rock on steroids. Not Kid Rock, huh? Chris Rock. Chris Rock. <laughs> Kid Rock and Chris Rock are looking for Okay, Chris Rock. Okay. I know we look Chris alike. Rock. Only on the Dead Hustle Show. Lovely. People tell me that all the time. Every time I walk out of the you look just like Kid Rock. Well, Retta, tell me a little bit about your career and, and I believe the relationship comes all into what you do. I am a division director for a pretty big nonprofit organization. We're affiliated um, agency down here in wow. what we call ourselves Southwest. Uh, my schools range from San Bernardino all the way to San Diego. We're dabbling in Orange County all the way to the border at El Centro Imperial County. Huge territory. Big territory, yeah. Huge. Yes. And we're opening wow. new schools every year. So I supervise all the aspects mm -hmm. of the school. So okay. Whether it's the nutritional program, the, all of those supervisors and managers report directly to me. The She's important. Management. Power couple over here. <laughs> no, I don't feel important. important. She's the boss. Her. 
church. She's the boss. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it was he really pushed me. You know, yeah. when I met him, I was supervising one school. A position came open. He's like, you better apply. You better go for it. You so he encouraged it. you to kind of push the No, he low. pushed me. There was no like, no you. encouragement about it. He pushed me. Okay. And I was like, I don't know. I'm not ready. <laughs> I think that's something. I was like, I don't know. I'm not ready yeah. for that. And since I've been with this guy, I've had from that level, I've promoted what five times. Yeah, about five times. Wow. So I'm gonna keep him. <laughs> but he's, he's really good. He's good for my career. I'm good for my career. I'm good for my career. But that's very how you good. know you're at the right time with the right person is that they make you yeah. a better version of yourself. I mean, you have the experience, you have the confidence, right. you have the personality. Yeah. But he just made me want to be a better version of you, and then it showed in your career. He did. Right? He, really, he really, really pushed me in. I didn't realize how far you could go from him. I, I didn't have the courage. <laughs> Even with this particular position, I didn't have the... I was like, oh my God, I'm like, that's huge. And he's like, if you don't submit that resume, and like, he just pushed me through. I told totally you to test awesome. it out. <laughs> It was him for 20 years who met Young, but I think every, and I came from education, I'm now out of it. Well, I'm That's still right, in you education. Were a yeah, yeah. Just, this year was my last year. Teacher okay, yeah, you're a teacher. Yeah. So I mean, uh, but he's like, look at his chest. Did you see the chest so advertising? Oh, like, so I like, uh, do we have to go on? <laughs> but from my very first teaching <laughs> job to where I'm now is all because of him. Like, he was yeah. the one I got my first teaching job through. My second teacher, like all of us, story because I knew somebody. He knew oh, somebody okay. who liked him, and he always talked about me. Mm-hmm. And they liked me without meeting me, <laughs> and said, "You got to get your wife hooked up with my wife." And that led to the God thing. It really was. All the way down to where it, it always is, and so that's yeah. what you. That's called to. networking. Always surround yourself with people who want to go to the next level. You know, we were talking about friendships. We were both saying before we got started here on camera how, you know when you're in high school, you got like all these friends, it's like feels like hundreds of people, though it's not that many realistically. And then over time, that list of friends starts right. to narrow right. down. The funnel yeah. gets a little bit smaller, right? Because you start to, as you're elevating in your career, in your life, in your relationships, you start to want to become a better version of yourself. So you just try to surround yourself with people that encourage you to do so. Yeah. You guys do that Definitely. for us. Oh, oh, you guys do it. Oh, oh, I mean, look, no, right, I mean, right. Really Kelly, right. and we have never once wanted to get it out. <laughs> oh, I'm going to put music in this part. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> insert, insert soft music. Can you cry on you? <laughs> She's like, always you afraid that I'm going to say something that will embarrass us and then make us lose the <laughs> few friends that we have. I have to tell him sometimes, depending on who we're meeting or where we're going, is to say, don't say she that gives me today. Verbal and instructions. Don't say that today. She gives me verbal you instructions do. on what not to say on what topics when we meet certain people. Well, wow. What did you say last night? You're happy that I know what I want. She knows exactly what she wants, and she knows exactly what she wants me to want. What? I her. What? And, and love for it. And I love for it. It makes my life so much easier where I don't have to think about what I want to do <laughs> or buy me for my birthday. or what I want to buy her. She really, dinner. really, really lets me know. As a matter of fact, I don't have to think about anything I want or want to do. <laughs> she lets me know exactly what I want to do. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> All you gotta do is get yourself to work and back, and she'll take care of the rest. <laughs> Call me before you leave work. <laughs> you may want to do a few things before you come home. <laughs> How long have you guys been together now since you've gotten back together? We just celebrated in April uh, our second uh, anniversary. wedding anniversary. That's awesome. So we are... Um, We're two we years married. But and together about five years now. About five years. Well, I like to wake up in the morning with no makeup and like my hair's like everywhere and uh-huh. I always ask him like if someone had sent you this picture of me and said you were <laughs> going to marry me, <laughs> would you? <laughs> what would you have done? I always <laughs> say yes. So the two time. meanest things that he's no. ever said to me with that is one, he said I would have said what happened to her and when did her life go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. one thing he yeah, said he would have started know, to ask about. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then there was one When time, they look homeless. <laughs> When you wake up and you look there at a homeless and person. I, no, no, no. You know and then about. the second worst thing is we were going to Smart and Final. I didn't, I had blow dried my hair and threw on a hat. Oh, okay. And just threw on some raggy clothes and I said, and I'm your wife. So we're like in the parking lot. I was like, look what you got. Look at all of this. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> and he said, um, I said, so again, 
if they had showed you me, what would you say? He would be like, here, lady, here's a couple of dollars. You know, get your life together. <laughs> it's really like a homeless oh, lady. Oh, I'm going to get it. But, oh, not, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. He was like, here's a couple of dollars. I, but if you think about it, I normally don't get homeless people money. But you. <laughs> but you. Yeah, you're a special You're a pretty homeless woman. I say, women and I talk all the time about how great you guys look. I mean, seriously, oh they gosh. look like they're in their 20s. And you guys have grandkids, but you look like you should have a toddler. And I just love like, looking but young at heart, your vibe. It's a lot of work. There is no such thing as um glam diva or glam grandma. Yeah. It's a myth. How many children and how many grandkids do you have? Oh, a total of five boys and one girl. Okay. Four of us in terms of children. Um, they're all between the ages of twenty-four and thirty. So we have a This is all on the outside. <laughs> On the inside, you're <laughs> tired. And, and when you walk, you think you're hearing Rice Krispies, but it's not. <laughs> it's your bones. That's like that's the cartilage between them, they crack it. So those first couple of steps, that cracking you hear, that's your bones. Like he asked me to pull his finger this morning, like his finger was stuck. My finger got so stuck. Like, like, babe, just like, stuck. push my not, finger up. Not like, just, what? what? Not like, I not in like some like, weird really way. Can't. It wasn't like, oh, oh pull my finger. Oh, no. no my finger like was that. stuck. No, yes. it was really stuck, like in the this position. Like, and I didn't have it. I just said, it's because I'm old. So now, my finger gets stuck. And it was his ring finger. I was like, you're still wearing your ring. Like, I don't care. Yeah, that ring ain't coming off. We don't have the same energy. Really? No. We no. feel the difference there. And we, as we get older, it's like, okay, we're going to go out and dancing or we're going to go to the lounge but we have to say okay so if we're going out then what time are we going to get our nap yeah <laughs> so it's we that thing naps. and if sometimes and we have to be careful because at our age sometimes you go lay down for a nap at four and you don't wake up and then you wake up at like 12 o'clock starving. and it's starving too late for dinner because when you get older you don't want to eat in the middle of the night that's a bad and we don't situation like in the morning. <laughs> There is something humbling about being a parent, right? Definitely. And raising your kid, but then there you reap the benefits on the flip side as a grandparent. You get to really enjoy the the hopefully. having the younger. Hopefully, younger, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully right? you, you do. do. No, you, you do. enjoy it you without do. like the love for my grandchildren. Yeah, it's just different. I don't. There's. It is. You have the love without the responsibility. So you, you, yeah, well, there's nice. still some yeah. responsibility because you, you you do want them to turn out okay. You don't want to just spoil them. It's interesting to see, like you are exactly wow. like your parents. There's little Amazing. deviations here and there, but at the end of the day, once you become a parent, then you find out why exactly they were doing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you do it too. And then as a as a grandparent, which is which is fun that you can see that in, in your kids. Uh, so it just full it circle. keeps going. Tell me this for you guys. You guys both have very successful careers. What's the next step in, in regards to that? Is there something else? Are you reaching for anything else? Are you completely content where you're at? I don't think the word content is viable. Things change so fast. Security yeah. is almost impossible to find, especially in the way things are going right, right now. Financial security is true. Yeah. Impossible to find. So you may find yourself doing well <coughs> this month and then something happens where your life changes and turns Thank upside you so down. Much. You can't be can't rest on the you, can, you can't change change, especially when you look around and things are very volatile right now. So and, and we have a lot of kids. We have a lot of children, we have a lot of grandchildren and we want to be supportive for them. We wanna we yeah. feel like we have to constantly move yeah. because just as it is volatile for us, it's the same thing for yeah. them. Right. And while they're self-sufficient so. now, they may need to move in. Things you can know, change things anytime. can change anytime. Now we don't he has a contract already ready if any of them have to come, which is hard. Next episode, kids. kids. Kids who try to move back into the home. That's good, being prepared. You're already anticipating. Yeah. Most people don't anticipate, and that's what gets them. Because when the kids have to move back, right. now they're like trying to scramble. Oh my God. What do we do? Right. Or try to save them. And yeah. that's not. And then maybe they don't well, lay any ground rules. Because when somebody does move in, like we live with, with an in law. My, my mom, who's awesome, mom, I know you're watching. Hi. But, you know, there's got to be ground rules in any relationship when you've got your right. blending families and in one house. And with kids, you don't necessarily have ground rules. You don't really 
were kids. I mean, we had rules when they lived with us, but right. at the end of the day, we're mom and dad. It's right. like, hey, pick my shoes up, you know? <laughs> it's like, sure. cause what are we eating? I'm hungry. I would love to put my feet up and say, hey, this is it. We, 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 we've made it to that point. Like Google, what is it like? Google is like, you have arrived. We need to your destination. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I like to believe You're that, right. but... The but there, yeah, there is, is. There, there is no there's arrival, no there is no final destination yeah. right now. Even though we want to retire at 70, I know that the both of us, we're still going to need to yeah. be able to move. It's not like you're going to be yeah. sitting but, at home, not doing yeah. anything. Right. So I'm thinking about transitioning into a job. I can do that in my retirement. So it's not a huge change. So like, so anyone from her job <laughs> that's watching this now, oh, they know. I please them. don't think yeah. that she's quitting tomorrow. I told them, I told them three years. I told you five, but I told them they got me for three years. <laughs> you have yeah. to have some quality of life. And I think yeah. working at the level that, at least I know I work, I know he works, he can manage his a little better because he focuses on facts, not emotions. So for me, <laughs> we do want to enjoy life, and we all, but we also want to know that our children are okay, that they're good, you know, yeah. they're self-sustaining. And if they need help, we want to know that we're in the position to help. Yeah. That is not a call to come home. <laughs> can you put like words on the bottom? Yes, we can. <laughs> Disclaimer. Right. Across the bottom. It would be running across the bottom. Please don't try to tend to come home. Okay. The answer to the question is yes. We constantly are looking for other things, always moving, always hustling. Yeah. But I don't know if that's just us. I don't know if other people do that. In this day and age, with what you guys were talking about, it's so true. Mindset of security really is all but vanished where you have right. to think that way yeah. you know so it, it's not just you guys i know we're the same <laughs> well, yeah. seems like most people we come in contact with they have things the minds are constantly working as to how can i help solidify the ground that i'm standing on because right. you never know what can come because we literally work 12 hour days so when we get home it's like i don't want to cook yeah it's um, the last thing you want to do after a long day if you're both working and you have the same conversation every day right around the same time what's for dinner I don't know. What do you want? I don't know. What are you cooking? I'm not cooking. What about you? I'm not cooking either. You go in the kitchen, you're like, oh, they got some nice pots and stuff. And stuff. Because we don't use them. We've got the pots for show. Yeah, <laughs> right. You know, that, that, lot that, the kitchen lot that. that lot of that stuff in the kitchen is just because in the magazine, that's what they had, so we just put it in there. Yeah. <laughs> well, he makes me bacon every I make, bacon, I make her wow. bacon. Wow. Turkey, Turkey bacon. bacon. So that's like a good breakfast. That's yeah. good. And coffee. And coffee. Little, I'm just a little burnt out on the bacon. Like <laughs> you can't right? <laughs> I appreciate yeah. it, but it's I have awesome. to say, I'm good on the bacon, right. babe. You're, you're a creature of habit. He is. Yeah. Uh, robot in the morning. I just come downstairs. Coffee. Coffee. Make myself a breakfast sandwich. Make her two pieces of bacon. And then. <laughs> and he puts them in a Ziploc bag. I put them in a little Ziploc bag. I put it next to her coffee. I'm like, I have coffee going. and she bacon every coffee. morning for breakfast. And then she takes her coffee and it burns her mouth. And she says, the coffee's too hot. And then she walks out. And then she goes, yeah. yeah, that's quite a routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was one point yeah. that we didn't realize we posted so many pictures of us eating out that people started to like respond back and say, Do you guys ever yeah, eat at yeah. home? We didn't stop eating out, we just stopped <laughs> posting. <laughs> because no, and then we, we posted felt... eating at home at one time. Oh, yeah. We were home eating and we posted it and they responded, You didn't cook that food. And I was like, how did you know y'all like Stasia? Anything in particular that you guys would like to say as we finish up here to the dad hustlers, mom hustlers, people getting after it? Well, the final thought would be, I, I would say don't give up, right? Hang in there. But at the end of the day, as a parent, you have no choice. You have to hang in there. You yeah. have to stick with it. It's true. You can't just decide one day that, you know what? Don't want to be a mom or a dad anymore. So you might as well make the best of it. And the more work you do as a parent, the less work you have to do when you're older. All kids have dreams. Sometimes those dreams bring you back home. Just as a note, <laughs> kids follow your dreams and make sure those dreams so put some coin in your pocket. If it doesn't, do something that puts coin in your pocket and on the side, that's it. Follow your dream. That's called side a side hustle. hustle. Hey, that's a nugget right there. Going to be a famous recording artist or something. Go work your job, and then when you can get off, do it from like six to two every night or whatever you gotta do. Yeah. Find a way. Yeah. You know, 
but make sure you pay your bills to do it. I really appreciate you guys joining in and I thank you guys for taking the time. Once again, my name is Will Crown, this is my wife Carla, and we're here to help you get to the next level in your debt hustle. Keep hustling, dads. Let you get started.